Hello, hello everybody. So today we're going to talk about the emitter emitter follower amplifier, uh, where the voltage gain is equal to one, and it's mostly used as a buffer, and uh, so certainly not as a voltage amplifier, but that as a current amplifier, if you will, so that you can drive heavy loads. That's the purpose of it. Okay, so let's try to design this thing. So this is the circuit. So you have an input here, which is going to be like a sine wave. And the output is going to be, so this is the V. And the output is going to be the exact same thing. So A, V equals one or almost one okay so how do you design this so we need to do a dc analysis so to get the so here i, I use a voltage divider bias to set the bias so there's a r1 r2 uh, sometimes you you can see circuits where there's no r1 there's only one r2 so anyway here we're going to use a voltage divider bias so we need r1 R2 and RE. So this is DC analysis. So when you do DC, the capacitors are uh, open circuits. Okay, so it, keep that in mind. But the first thing you need to do is that you need to make an assumption on VE. So uh, VE to get uh, the largest swing without clipping ve we're going to set it at half vcc that's commonly done so maybe we should put some uh, values so vcc i'm going to put it at 9 volts so v is going to be 4.5 volts then so this is the ve here are the emitter uh, then we can compute re assuming that we know I see. So I'm going to assume these are my assumptions here. So I'm going to assume I see the basic the Kirsten point. I'm going to I'm going to take it relatively large. Then basically you want it to be large but not too large that you don't fry the transistor. But here since the goal is to drive like a heavy load. I'm gonna uh, usually I would use one milliamp, but here I'm using 10. So once you know, and we as okay, hold on, and we of course assume that IE is almost equal to IC, so it's pretty much the same thing. IE, IC, you can use them interchangeably. So RE, you use Ohm's law, so it's VE over IE, which is equal to the IC or IQ. So that gives you uh, 4.5 divided by 10 milliamp. So that gives you 450 ohms, right? 4.5 divided by by 10 is 0 0.45, 0 0.45k ohm is 450 ohms. So that's correct. RE is equal to 450. That's the first one. Then R1, R2. That's relatively easy. Uh, you, can, you can compute the ratio for sure. So R1 over R2 by definition is VR1 over VR2. And let's look at VR1. So VR1 is what? Is VCC minus VB. Yes? VR1 is VCC minus VB. And VR2? VR2 is VB minus ground. So it's just VB. So what is VB? VB, VB, VB. So VB is VE plus 0.6 volts. So let's compute VB somewhere. Eh. 
VB equal VE plus 0.6 volts equal 4.5 plus 0.6. That's what? 5.1 volt. So you get 9 minus 5.1 divided by 5.1. I did that before. This is 0 0.7. Six five. So we know the ratio. That's good, but we still need another equation to find R1 and R2. So I'm going to refer to a previous video I made about the uh, common emitter amplifier where I explain where the formula I'm just going to put right now comes from. So please uh, have a look at that video. I'm putting a link right now to it. And that, that, that thing says R1 in parallel over R2 must be much less than R in base DC. Okay, so that's, if you, if you don't know about this, just look at that video because I explain it, I explain in more detail. Okay. Let's switch board. Okay, second board. So R1 in parallel with R2 must be less than... Okay, so what does that mean? So R1 in parallel with R2 must be much less than R in base DC. So let's say it can be... Uh, Let's put alpha, and alpha is going to be either 1 over 10, 1 over 100, 1 over 1000, whatever. We'll discuss what's the best way to do it. Usually you take 1 tenth, but here it might not be the best idea. So equal alpha times R in base DC. So what is R in base DC? R in base DC is the resistance when you look into the base uh, in DC. So it's the DC resistance looking into the base. And if you look at that video I made before, it's the value is, this is equal to beta R E, beta R E. I mean, it's easy to see, I can go back here. If you, if you do DC, you know that this is an open circuit. So this is out of the picture. This is open circuit. So when you look into the base, uh, DC analysis, all you see is the RE. Whatever path to the ground, whatever path to the ground you see, is there's only RE. And the problem is that it's not just RE. You have to multiply by beta because here, here you are, you are considering uh, the base current, but here it's the collect, I mean, the emitter or collector current. And there's a ratio of beta between the two. So that's why you need to multiply by beta. Okay, so, so R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, is equal, so this is R1 parallel with R2, equal alpha, beta re and here i'm assuming that beta the hfe is equal to 100 and re we computed it before it's 150 so it's equal to alpha 100 times 450 so and we we also know that r1 r1 is equal to 0.765 times r2 you computed the ratio before so all you have to do is replace r1 here in there so you replace you put that into this and you get uh, okay let me do it 0.6 r2 square divided by 1.765 r2 is equal to alpha times 100 times 450 
and that gives so this is removed that gives you r2 is equal to r2 is equal to alpha times 103 103 k ohms r2 is equal to alpha times 103 k ohm so alpha usually you take one tenth so that would give you r2 equal 10.3 k ohms but 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 the problem is that i think it's too high because it would uh, uh, the load would see uh, an output impedance that's uh, probably a bit too high and i think i'll go back to this about that uh, about output impedance but what you rather have is uh, 100 so instead of uh, 10.3 it's probably better to have r2 equal 1.03 k ohm so I'm using alpha equal this one. And I'll go back to that. Okay, so let's do some AC. So I'm going to redraw. So this is the circuit, but I'm going to redraw. And I'm going to short circuit the capacitors. So I'm going to redraw V in. So no C1. This is R1, ECC up there. This is R2, ground. Here I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the equivalent transistor. So here you have a, a current source, beta IB. Here you have RTR uh, trans resistance which is 26 millivolt divided by I E and this is 10 milliamp in our case so this is 2.6 ohm okay so that's your collector base emitter R E ground and then you have your load R L this is the out this is the out okay what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna compute Z in and Z out you always need to know that so what's the in Z in is the impedance looking in so here, here, here it's just a resistance, but Z in equal, so VCC, when you do AC, the VCC is actually a ground, okay, so it's going to be R1 in parallel with R2, in parallel with the R in base AC, what is R in base AC is the resistance looking in into the base into the base so going this way so what is it it's rtr rtr plus re in parallel with rl not quite not quite not quite it's going to be times Beta. Why? Because here you have a IB, but the problem that here you have IE, and we know that IE is beta times IB, so you get you put the beta. Uh, if you want a rigorous uh, demonstration of this, you can look at my uh, video about uh, the first part, I think, of my common emitter amplifier video the first part but this is this is basically uh, why you put the beta because here you have IB and here you have IE okay so let's look at the values here you have 2.6 2.6 ohms uh, this is what 
450 this is 100 so 450 100 in parallel it's about 100 a little bit less let me check it's 81 so it's 80 something <coughs> so it's uh so the whole thing is about 100 let's put it that way let's say it's about 100 times beta 10k this is what 1k this is 1k so uh this you can uh, you can ignore 1k in parallel with 1k is 500 so the in, <coughs> the in is about 500 ohm z in is pretty much r1 in parallel with r2 it's equal to it's equal to 500 so this is z in you can look at z out why not so let's get rid of this so z in is about r1 parallel with r2 let's keep that but this let's get rid of it Okay, so let's compute Z out. What is Z out? Z out equals. So Z out is the impedance looking back this way. This is Z out. So it's going to be RE in parallel with. It says RTR in parallel. So in parallel with whatever you see going into the emitter. So it's going to be RTR. This branch you don't care because it's high impedance. You only care about this branch. So it's going to be a plus RTR plus RTR plus whatever you see going this way. What do you see? You see R1 in parallel with R2. Not quite, not quite, not quite, not quite. Because here I, I have IE, but here there's IB. So we have to divide by beta. Remember that when we did Z in, you had to, uh, you had to multiply by beta. Here you divide by beta because you're going the other way. So let's put some number. What's this? This is uh, 450 ohms. This is 2.6, almost nothing. Uh, this is 500. This whole thing is about 5. And you end up with R E in parallel, so this guy doesn't count. So Z out is about Z out is about let's let's forget about RTR, I mean. And just say to have something nice is about sorry, R1 parallel with R2 divided by beta. So Z out is about this, and it's about five ohm. So we have Z in is about R1 in parallel with R2 and Z out is about, about R1 parallel with R2 divided by beta. Okay. So I think now we can kind of come back to, so we have Z in, Z out. We can kind of come back to why I chose that uh, R1 in parallel to R2 thing. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I have, may have to redo it, but that's okay. Yeah, here yeah, I, I was, I had like R1 in parallel with R2 when I was doing DC, R1 in parallel with R2, it must be less than R in base DC. And I did something like that. So R1 in parallel with R2 must be much less than R in base DC. This is beta RE. And instead of doing a must be much less, I was I was say I said that it must be equal to alpha, where alpha is equal either to one tenth, one hundredth, 
1000 etc and i chose this one not that one but i did not really explain why uh, let's try to let's try to explain why based on uh, z out so if alpha equal one tenth i was r1 equal kind of equal r2 is about 10k and that was in that case you end up with a z out equal r1 in parallel with r2 divided by beta and it's equal to about about equal not exactly equal so 10k that's 5k divided by beta 5k divided by 100 so 5000 it's a what 50 it's 50 ohm if you do 100 which is what i chose you get z out equal about 5 ohm and remember that uh, rl we want rl to be 100 so we still want this to be larger than the z out otherwise we are going to lose a lot of uh, power so uh, z out at 50 ohm is it's i think too much you would rather have it at 5 ohm so that's why i use this one 100 because of the load being so so small here that's why i choose this and therefore this and that gave me r1 r2 at about 1k instead of 10k okay all right so now we need to compute the the capacitors after that i'm going to stop because the fumes from those things are <clears throat> so v in let me redraw c1 r1 r2 ground pcc up there you see it yeah and then you have the so that's my constant source uh, current source this this and here you have rtr then you have uh, what do you have here re ground then here you have c2 then you have the load rl so this is still ac huh? we are computing c1 okay so c1 uh, it's a high pass filter clearly you can see that this is this is r in out okay so in this case c is equal to one over two by f 3 db times r f 3 db 100 hertz but you could use 20 hertz if you want so anything past that is going to go through but what is r what is r what is r r is the resistance looking like here so it's always the same thing what is r it's r1 in parallel with r2 oh shit this this thing and then you go into the base so it's going to be the r in base ac we which we computed earlier well, I, can, I can recompute it's easy so r1 parallel r2 with r in base r in base ac r in base ac is r dr it's going to be a beta in front So RTR plus RE in parallel with RL. 
Okay, so you multiply by beta, be careful with that. Because here you have uh, IB, but here you have IE, so careful with that. Remember that. So we know all this. Uh, this is about 1k, it's about 1k, it's not exactly 1k, but this is 100, this is 2.6, this is 450, this is 100. It's going to give us, so you, you compute the R. So this is uh, 8.4k. And let me get it exactly. Uh, recall that. Let me put back. Let me put R1 and R2 here because otherwise I'm not going to remember. R2 was it was equal to 1.03k ohm and R1 was equal to 0.79k ohm. Okay. Okay, so this is about uh, it's about 40, I think. And I think you end up with C equal to 3.74 microfarad. Or C1. I mean, I'm not completely sure it's correct. I mean, this is the right uh, value. But this is correct, but I'm not sure about this one. It doesn't really matter anyway. But let's do C2. Let's do C2. C2 is even easier. C2 is easier. Let's do C2. Or C2. I mean, you can see the capacitor and you can see the, the resistance. So it's just this. 1 over 2 pi F 3 dB times R. And R is R load. RL. And RL is 100, so that's an easy one. Okay, I found it's about it's about 16. So, I uh, mean, you can just put 10 microfarad on both and call it a day. Okay, so at this point, I'm 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 pretty much done. What you re really should do is the. Uh, uh, use LT spice to check that it actually works. That's what I would do. But I'm going to stop here because I'm just too tired to continue. So if you like this kind of uh, content, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will be I will be making more.